pre-existing conditions, we can write a bill that says you're going to offer health care. Now I want to ask you one question. In this room, how many people call up and have GEICO for their car insurance? All right, so these people are willing to pick up the phone because some lizard or gecko tells them they have better insurance. <laughs> Nothing against it, I like it, right? Or, you know that other insurance company, Progressive, you ever see those ads where somebody walks in and says, well, I want some of this, I want some of that, but I don't want this, and then they say, well, just tell me how much you want to spend and we'll build a plan for you. But when you call that company, you know what? You're calling across state lines. We don't allow that in healthcare. You can only call within the state, can ask for a plan. And what happens with that? You get two big companies that will control it. Let's open this up, bring the free market into healthcare. I believe these are common sense ideas 80% of the Congress can get to. Now, to run the bills, to run it through, this is another problem I have with this. This bill was introduced in July, 17 days before it's all the way through committee. It's one-sixth of the entire economy. It can affect each and every one of us. That is not the way to run Congress. I remember growing up, I'd go Saturday morning, turn on the TV. This is how I first learned about Congress. That schoolhouse rock, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill, right? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? If I ask you to sing the preamble, you'll sing it. We the people, okay. Remember that, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. I sit here and wait, I'm stuck in committee. That doesn't happen today. Today, the Speaker of the House, she writes the bill, she puts it in, they vote on it with nobody reading it. And I want to give you an example. She is from California. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What has happened, and let me give you an example of past. When Bill Clinton was president, he introduced health care reform. They spent seven weeks in Ways and Means debating the issue. That bill was introduced, voted on in 24 hours out of committee. 24 to 48 hours right on now. That is not a way to do it. Whatever we do, we need transparency. Look at the turnout here. You care about health care. Let's put it before the people. Let them understand it. And vote on it. Now, the final reason is the cost. Congressional Budget Office says this would cost over 10 years a billion dollars. So how do you get to pay for it? Their offer is to cut different places in Medicare by 500 billion. Okay. Medicare, for the first time last year in 2008, had to pay out because the money coming in wasn't enough. It said it would be totally depleted by 2017. How are we going to add more debt to it? This would cost over $200 billion, even if you took that money, even if you added the taxes. That's the Congressional Budget Office telling us that. So what we need to do is bring the free market in, lower the cost, bring up the access, and have the ability. And the last thing I would tell you, we need to empower the patient. I will tell you, all of us, any of you that bought a new TV, I'll guarantee you, you spent more time deciding which TV, HD or not, to buy, flat screen or not, than what the doctor told you you need a procedure of checking it out, whether the quality of there is not. And what has happened is, think for one minute, when you go out tonight or you go out and have dinner, the first thing when you walk into a restaurant, you see a sign there on the cleanliness, A, B, C, or D. You sit down with a group of people, you get a menu, you can all choose something different based upon what you want. Somebody you want a salad, somebody wants a meal, like me, you want all of it plus dessert. <laughs> but you know the cost, you know what's going forward. We need to empower that more. We need people to make the decision, not bureaucrats. All right, having said all that, that is why I propose this bill. But having said all that, I want health care reform. And I believe we can get it. So tonight, a few rules of the game. 
You know, when I first started this out, we first were at the city council chambers and I had about 100 RSVPs. That lasted about a day, then it went higher. We went over to the, to the Dore Theater, that held 500 and went much higher. So at first I thought I'd do a lottery system, but it takes so much time for people to figure out what their number is. I went and got as many microphones as we can get. And I went and got probably the most, I don't know, is it an ugly shirt or just a bright shirt? These orange shirts. And I want to thank all those people who are holding the microphones and willing to serve them. <laughs> Knowing how big the crowd is, we're not going to get to all your questions but I want to get to many as possible, and I will stay here afterwards. That's why I asked for your comments. That's why I asked you to go to the website. But we are going to put the microphones out and about. With 14, we're going to cover a large portion. And we are just going to go rotate through here. I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to comment about it. But the one thing I ask for everyone, first and foremost, we're Americans first. There is no dumb question. There's no disrespect for one another. I want to hear all the ideas. And I want to tell you this. I work for you. You can say anything you want to me. But the respect to one another, let's give it to them, okay? All right, if we could put the uh, individuals out and about, we'll go through. And um, right before we begin, I do want to mention um, you know, I served in the state legislature. I served with Governor Schwarzenegger, who his wife, Maria Schreiber, um, my prayers go to them. Maria has lost her mother and her uncle, uncle Ted Kennedy all within about a week. They were believed in public service. I might not philosophically always agree with them, but I know what it's like to lose a loved one. My hearts and prayers go out to them. We'll go section by section. All you have to do is raise your hand. Don't be shy. We'll go through. We'll start with Kristen right there. How about the pink shirt? Well, all I ask you to do, state your name and where you're from so people know who you are. My name is Les Person. Go ahead. My name is Les Person. I'm a board certified person physician practicing here in Bakersfield for the past 20 years. Put the microphone closer. I'll start over. Better? It's not loud enough. Okay, speak loud. My name is Les Burson. Yes? yes? Yes. I'm a board certified practicing emergency physician here in Bakersfield. I've been here for 20 years. I'm the president of a small business that takes care of patients in the emergency department and staff that ED with local professionals. I have a two part question. Federal law requires us to see everyone that presents to the ER regardless of their ability to pay. Is there anything as legislation? that addresses the unfunded mandate of Otala, which is this bill, government bill that says everyone must be seen, which we do with our badge of honor. We see everybody, no matter what the condition is, in the words of regards to their ability to pay. Second part of the question, health care is not free. We as a small business provide hundreds of thousands of dollars every year and provide free care. We don't have a commodity, it's just our knowledge that we provide, our experience and our expertise. With Wells Fargo, was decided to give uh, the homeless shelter central air conditioning. You can bet Wells Fargo is going to get some sort of tax deduction or benefit or write off for that care, for that for that contribution. We contribute hundreds of thousands of dollars for free care every day, every year. Is there anything in this bill that potentially that we can possibly write off some of this charitable contribution that we do on a daily basis? Good question. Two part question. He's an emergency room doctor. Emergency rooms, I don't know if you've been to them lately. If you go there, you're going to about spend a day. They become the new engines. They say they have to serve everyone, and they do, whether they're going to get paid or not. There's nothing in this bill that's going to change that or solve that. In fact, part of the cuts in Medicare, part of the cuts are actually cut down. The other one is a tax write off. I don't see it in the bill, and I read the bill, but that's an item I actually believe. We not only should give you a tax write-off, we should give the public when they go out and write it, corporations get it. Why can't you get it as well? It would drive the cost lower and give a better choice. Thank you for the question. Okay, this better? We'll keep changing until it works. All right, now we're going to go to this side. What do you got? 